Hey guys, welcome to another triple commentary with Clazer, Diggity, and Moltrap. And uh, this is going to be on Zodiac. It's the losers match between Bisu and uh, Yark. And who would have thought we'd see Bisu here? Absolutely incredible. Uh, and it looks like uh, let's get the positions out here. <laughs> Apparently Moltrap did. Actually, I called that too. Actually, nine o'clock position orange. We have uh, looks like Yark. And at the six o'clock position in red, we have Bisu. And going by color theory, red the color of power, I believe. Bisu looks pretty dominant, and this Although, is Zodiac, very strong Protoss. Um, Moltrap, what do you think about this matchup? <laughs> I did, was it July? Didn't Julyzer just no? Julyzer had green, and uh, and Jadong beat him with, with orange as orange Zerg. So uh, again, this is gonna be we're, we're braving new territory in color theory during this grouping. Um, basically, my thoughts on this is that Bisu is going to slaughter Yark. And uh, I'm not sure how anything else can come of it. Although, the last time I said that, I was completely wrong. Um, I said, oh, there's no way Rock can beat anyone. Rock sucks. I hate Rock. Rock can't beat anyone. And then Rock actually beat C of all people and, and ended up coming out of the group 2-0. So, I mean, you know, in StarCraft, anything can happen. Even the best players only have 70% winning, which means 3 out of 10 times they lose. So, like I said, anything's possible. But... Bisu losing the Yark is less possible than most things. I think one telling thing about this match is this this map is practically made, absolutely made for the Bisu build. You've got those large expanses, lots of uh, room to kind of move those Corsairs along, large distances, so you're not going to have to wor worry about the Zerglings. Yark is really going to be forced to go and into a Mutalus build, and uh, honestly... And empty air patches and empty air patches. We'll see if he can deal with that. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, this matchup class? Yeah, I mean, first glance, I gotta completely agree with both of you guys that Bisu's a far superior player to Yarnak. At, at this point in time, Yarnak hasn't proven himself to be good enough. Um, his overall just coming in to get at scout and is going to see Bisu, and Bisu once again not opting for the forge. Uh, Yarnak going for the 12 hatch into pool, it would seem. So, um, I think it's going to be interesting to see what Yarnak can do here because Yarnak's been a little bit unpredictable. Sometimes he's played brilliantly and, and, and come out with a win. Other times he's looked quite ordinary. He looked quite ordinary against July with, with a bit of a nothing build. Um, you know what? I'm more surprised to see Bisu here than I am anything else. Um, to see a player of his caliber uh, almost on the verge of going out of the US uh, of the MSL. Uh, and, and that's a very scary prospect. Um, I, you know, I don't think I would mind it too much if Yarnak didn't make it in. Uh, but certainly I would like to see Bisu there. Really, I have to say, Yarnik, or Yarnik, I should say, has really improved a lot this season. Um, more than any other player I've seen, I kind of, he had my vote for most improved. I know a lot of people disagree with that. Uh, Forge going down now, and obviously that's going to be somewhat late. And it looks like uh, setting down just for that a little bit of extra gas. To kind of get an advantage in this game, what can Yark do? I mean, obviously, there was, we're going to see a late can from Bisu, and that was a big factor, in my opinion, even in, in the Jadong versus Bisu match, that that no no second can until very late, and a third can and basically extremely late. Uh, do you think that's going to play a big factor here, or will Yark be able to push up with this distance here to kind of force uh, the two cannons down? What's, what's your opinion on that, Moltrap? Well, it's interesting that you mention that because uh, basically, I mean, I, I don't think Yark is, is as expert as Jadong as a, of a player. And regardless of what you feel about um, Jadong's uh, Zerg versus Protoss, he's he's got a, a really good brain for StarCraft. Basically, he's got he's got really good um, game sense. And in the first game, BC put down that, just that one cannon and. And since he was playing against someone who was just as expert, and some links going in here, but I don't think they're going to do a lot of good. Just because BC was, um, besides, because Jadong, I'm sorry, was just as expert at the game, then he kind of also did the same thing, and they both went for a long-term build. Yarn, oh, I this is actually huge it. here. As you can see, the forge is not covered by that cannon. Uh, that single ling is actually going to be able to pick at that cannon, unless Bisu is actually going to be nice forced guys. to put a second cannon down. Uh, so he needs to put something there to uh, defend against it. So uh, actually, it looks like it's going to be boom point. Now he has a zealot out to chase those lings off. But a little bit of a tick there. I thought maybe uh, we'd see a little bit of action there. Getting a little too excited about nothing. Um, but uh, now you see the gas up. And sorry for interrupting. Go ahead uh, again, Moltra. Oh, that's all right. I was just thinking that that because Yark isn't um, as expert as Jadong, I think he'll, he'll probably go for more forces earlier on instead of like Jadong went for more economy and tech. And and we do see that, that at this point Jadong had like two lings and now Yark has several lings uh, and, and that might make the difference, although Albisu has kind of matched him by um, delaying his tech a little bit and going for a couple of zealots instead. So 
Um, things things looking pretty much even at this point, uh, to the way they did last last game. So starport going up, and now uh, ooh, Bisu gonna scout that fourth hatchery uh, at that 12 o'clock position offset, of course, in front. Uh, who who do you think has oh, the advantage here, Klaz? And yeah, interestingly. Uh, uh, it, was that a layer? Actually, layer going up uh, simultaneously, and he's going to be very late actually on that spire and the and the the, the uh, God can't talk all of a sudden. The hydralis den. Uh, who do you think? What can Yark do to get back in this game or, or kind of prove himself, establish himself in this game? In your opinion, class? I think that fourth hatchery was interesting. I think the scout was more interesting. I think the fact that Beast scouted it might very well change the game a little bit around. If he hadn't scouted, I think Yarnok would have been much safer. That being said. Bisu did delay in his tech a little bit, that target only started going up a little while ago, so I think provided Yarnak puts up a hard list in reasonable time, he should be kinda okay to cope with that target, which is not complete in building coursers. Um, but but yeah, I mean definitely he's, he's a little bit late on that spire, choosing to go for that fourth hatchery. I don't know if that's gonna pay off for him, I don't think it's a great idea. Um, I, I don't think he needs that fourth hatchery this early in the game, to be quite honest. Um, he, he's, not, he's not really gonna be able to defend it, in my opinion. So Spire going up, I still don't see a Hydralis down. It looks like he just produced a Hydralis, so he does have it down somewhere. It looks like, okay, right next to his main. Um, and, and we'll see a Corsair here in just a couple seconds. And will Yark actually... I'm not sure if he's going to have enough Hydralis to defend against any sort of Corsair harass. Let's see if he manages to gather around the, four, the few Hydralis he has. But uh, what, what would be the better strategy here? Do you think he should scatter the Overlords to basically across the Earth as the two Corsairs are coming out? Or should he just leave it as is and try to protect them in a solid group? Looks like he's going to lose one right off the bat right there. Uh, what's your opinion on that, Moltrap? Yeah, see, by the way, that's the that's kind of the empty space. Oh, two robotics facilities going down, so Bisu is definitely going to go for, for Reavers, it looks like. That's interesting. I was going to say that empty space is kind of what I was talking about as far as... Uh, he's getting, getting a... wow, getting an island expansion, too. The empty space is what's going to enable Bisu if he takes the, the air advantage then he's going to be able to, to basically take the whole game because those empty spaces are going to let him hide his, his reavers and stuff in the background, that sort of thing. Um, it, it's really hard to tell. No major things have happened yet. So really there's there hasn't been a chance for for um, Yonk to lose yet. Although now he's losing some overlords. So that may be a pro Oh, and critically some scourges going down. Oh, ah, it's actually going to be really cute. He managed to take out a Corsair, oh, and he has a larger oh, group crap. of Zulus out early. Oh no, a couple cannons going to put, uh, going down, trying to get some cannons down in his main, oh now pushing gosh. up the Mutalus into Bisu's main. He has the Hydra, he has the Mutalus there, and he, a, a few more Mutalus in, uh, incoming. I'm not sure if he can fight this off. Now Dragoons, uh, more forces coming to the back. Uh, the question is, 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 does he have enough Corsairs? Is he going to be able to fight this off? More Mutalus pushing in. Bisu in a bit of trouble here. Uh, looks like he's going to lose uh, maybe that Corsair, maybe both here. Uh, just trying to delay to get those cannons up pulling that Corsair off now, but still those mules very safely behind the lines, doing a lot of damage to Bisu's economy. Uh, has that changed the game? Has that put Yark in it? But in the meantime, oh man, an oh. attack uh, by Bisu doing exactly what he needed to do, dropping some zealots nice. uh, in Yark's main, evening up, uh, really pushing it. Wow, that was brilliant by Bisu. Absolutely brilliant play, and that shows you why he is a two-time MSL champion. Uh, and now forcing those mutalists to pull back off the line. Uh, but r after this exchange, do you think either player is up, or is it dead even, or does, uh, or is Bisu once again uh, firmly ahead? What's your opinion on that, class? Um, it's it's impossible to call. I think this game is balanced on an absolute knife edge. Um, I think one of the things that Bisu might have made a little bit of a mistake off, I think, was going for the du dual robotics facility. I, I think. The, he played a little bit into uh, Yarnak's hands um, by not going for Templar, he, even though I know that's probably you know not not necessarily the best thing to go for on, on, on this map. But I think the fact that Yarnak had spread himself so thin, I think Dark Templar would have been more effective uh, because uh, especially early on. But I think the the other crucial thing is with the second robotics facility, uh, you know, Bisu kind of almost surrendered air superiority to Yarnak despite the despite the Stargate. Uh, the, the second Stargate went up very late, so I think he would have been better off with two Stargates initially as he went versus uh, versus Sorry to Jadon. interrupt your class, but I. Uh, we got a huge force of Hydralis coming in, and this is going to be really interesting. Now that fourth hatchery uh, kind of uh, playing in, he's going to go push it, try to attack that oh. robotics. Uh, oh wow! Almost taking down a Reaver. He's going to have to pull back. Oh man! As you can see, all that Hydralis guts and blood. Uh, out there in the front, so Bisu managing to defend against the attack. For a second there, I thought Bisu might be able to crack the front door uh, if, if Yarnk basically played some amazing micro. Now Bisu pushing up oh! the drop shuttle, and the drop shuttle oh, goes down with two weavers inside. Oh Weaver my goodness, that was absolutely devastating. Bisu not playing up to standard. Uh, oh, obviously, man. a little bit sloppy here. Another hatchery going down. A lot of hydras pushing up. Bisu looking a little bit uh, befuddled there, as you can see, looking kind of uh, frustrated, maybe uh, kind of disappointed oh, losing that game. Now going in for a right massive there. Corsair. Oh, so many overlords right there, so defenseless, and uh, all those hydralisks uh, 
not just those three hydralisks, four hydralisks aren't going to be able to defend them. Uh, so doing a little bit of damage to supply. Still a lot of overlords down. Now a big attack pushing in. Sorry for interrupting there, Klaz, but do you think the, the game with those two Reavers down, the only Reaver up, and those basically five hatcheries at this point, is that going to make the difference here uh, as this attack goes off? I'm not sure. I don't think this is going to break it. Though, uh, like yeah, well, Yannick is no, coming in. He needs to try and take that Reaver. He's, he needs to target that Reaver he's down. Try to and he's unable Reaver to get down. in range. And he, he takes the Reaver, take the Reaver down. And now Beast has got Brilliant. no ground forces. So I, I, as long Another as Yannick has enough overlords. Uh, uh, but ahead, yeah, a couple quick, quick probes though. coming off. Uh, gonna attack that that gateway. Two cannons going down. He has to protect that reaver, but that, he's gonna lose that gateway. A lot of uh, uh, hydro is pushing up that gateway's the down. That's gonna be huge. Life. That pops up in the front. The reaver running. Uh, oh, the cannons the are gonna wow. The Shuttle out just in time to try to protect it, but the front door of Bisu's wide open, having to defend with his probes, uh, trying to push in. A lot of Corsairs attacking the Overlords, trying to get that supply down in the meantime. So just, wow, this game's absolutely fantastic. I wasn't expecting a game this good. Those Corsairs going, taking down those Overlords. But the question is, is uh, will it be enough? Probes <laughs> just finally taking out, uh, doing a lot of damage. More Hydralis coming up. They're going to uh, take the probes. So effectively, Bisu is down to a single base at the moment, uh, as far as economics. And, and uh, I'm sorry, he also has that island expansion, pushing up, continuing to try to harass with those Corsairs. His front door looking very, very weak, very, very thin, uh, had evened up, and wow, just it's still a decent sized group, and more Hydralis coming. This is going to be absolutely incredible. Um, and this could be the match here in just a few seconds. Uh, uh, Hydralis, oh first God. shot, wow, baiting with that first Hydralis so he could take down that Reaver. A second shot, though, going to take out that, uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that Reaver down. Another Reaver produced. Wow, this is absolutely insane. Those cannons being cancelled, uh, trying to get that blockade. Second cannon down, uh, managed to only get a single Hydralis, and more reinforcements coming uh, in the meantime. Not sure where he's getting this supply from. Uh, uh, pushing in that, that, wow, that lone reaver is the only thing defending his front door at this moment. Uh, and wow, uh, I'm not sure how that island expansion is doing, but this is absolutely insane. Hunting that reaver into the corner, reaver getting one more shot. The scarab only gets a single a hydralis, and it looks like another reaver just popped out, but I don't think it's going to be enough to defend this expansion. Uh, Yarp being very clever, spreading, only losing a single hydralis once again. And now, wow, that natural is entirely exposed. Uh, and wow, what what can Bisu do? Wow, Bisu looking just absolutely on the back foot. What can he do to get back in this game? Blazard. Nothing, the game's over. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, Yonk doesn't have any well, overlords. Bisu GG! It doesn't matter. Jeez. Oh, oh my god. god. Once he surrendered oh, those robotics man. facilities, the game was over, guys. Um, from my point of view. Once he surrendered those robotics facilities, wow. that was GG. Absolutely it's insane. I did. I would have I, not predicted I'm... that in a million years. Absolutely. That was Bisu looking uh, very distraught. Oh man, looking absolutely oh, stunned. Man. And I am absolutely stunned. I did. Wow, I would have never picked that. I didn't have Bisu coming out of this group, but I thought it was going to be July that was going to beat him, not Yark. Uh, wow. Oof. Okay, That's turning it over, Moltrap. Review I, that match. I, what happened? What? Well, what I noticed, it was interesting. Basically, Yark dictated what was going on. Because what happened is I saw... <clears throat> excuse me. We saw Bisu put up the second robotics facility. I noticed it wasn't there later, which means that... When he saw all those mutilists, he canceled the robotics facility to have the money for the second Stargate. And then, after that, Yark went in with the with mutilists, and he no longer had that second robotics facility. He was not pumping out reavers or anything like that. And instead, then he came in with hydralisks for the next wave. And and Bisu would have been prepared for it if he had those two robotics facilities up earlier. But he just he barely had the second robotics facility warping in again when those hydralists came to his front door and, and you saw there it just wasn't enough even though he he was pumping out of, of two he didn't have that stash of reavers um if he'd had three reavers behind those cannons at the beginning instead of one he would have taken um he would, would have basically held his base and uh he didn't have that stash of reavers so basically yark kind of like i said dictating the way things went with his attacks and uh being being really um Clever, actually, more clever than I would have expected out of him. Definitely, I think. That, yeah, I think a turning point there was is the Reavers. Uh, do you think if he went with Templar, that would have changed? That would have changed what happened there, class. Yeah, I think there were there were a few things that kind of influenced the way the game panned. I think there were probably three key points. I think the first key point was Yarnak going for that fourth hatchery and having it scouted by Bisu. Uh, and Bisu's response to seeing that fourth hatchery seemed to be to put down that second robotics facility. Uh, and, 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 you know, that was, that was for me one of the big things that he chose to go. That was the second point, was that he chose to go for robotics facilities rather than Templar. I think with Yarnak having spread himself so thin, I think Bisu still had an opportunity to put down the Templar archives, although perhaps he felt he didn't have enough gateways and he was too 
too invested in the robotics facility to be able to do that. And so it, maybe it wasn't possible for him to do that. But I think a couple of Dark Templars, along with the Corsairs, would have, uh, you know, with, with say two gate Corsairs with Dark Templar would have probably been a superior strategy. But obviously, he 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 didn't. Once he committed himself to that build, he had to go. He had to continue on with it. But I think despite all of that. Pisu was in control of the game, and really, I, I think the clear turning point of the game was when he lost that shuttle with those two Reavers in it. That's when Yarnok was able to affect the kill. Yeah, that's and true. That's literally, true. I as I was... That, yeah. Right, but as I was watching that battle, uh, I was actually just about thinking that Beastu was edging ahead because he was killing a few mutilists and he was chasing a few mutilists away and killing them. Uh, and I was just commenting that Yarnok was losing a lot of his mutilists. But just after that, literally after that, seconds later, he lost his shuttle and that would just really change the game. And I don't think Beastu, I don't think it was possible for Beastu to recover from losing two Reavers and shuttle that early on in the game. Really, yeah, I feel I like it was those that two shuttle loss that made that fourth hatchery worthwhile for Yarn, because then he could just start pumping troops in. Sorry for interrupting you in that point, Clazard, but I really thought, uh, I almost felt like he was going when he had that mutilus group, he might be able to pick off that reaver and actually break the front door then. But uh, ending up doing it later, and just absolutely wow, the key choice, I guess that her, that would you say this was luck or would you say this was uh, just uh, maybe sloppy play by Bisu? What do you think ended up? dictating this match there, uh, Moltrap. Um, you know, it's interesting. I do I do agree, by the way, that I think the turning point was the loss of that shuttle. And I I, I didn't think about that before. For some reason, I forgot about it. Um, but I, that's basically why he was behind on Reavers um, that far. And I don't think that he would have had time, though, to go um, go for Templar. I, I really don't think he would have had time to, to get the Templar archives up because he didn't have a, a citadel, citadel down at that point. I don't think we'd have time to get the Templar archives up and research Psy Storm and get the Templar out to have the energy and that sort of thing that would have saved him. And I, I, it's interesting. I think that maybe why he went for the double robotics facility is because we were talking about in the first game, Jadong beat him because he had mass ground forces and he didn't have a lot of Reavers to support him. And maybe Beast thought about that and said, hmm, okay, well, this this game I'm going to get make sure I have enough Reavers to support. Um, I don't know, just that's, a thought. That's that's an interesting point. How much did the psychology of the first game with Jadong uh, depict the play here, uh, class? Um, I think it's an interesting point. I don't know. I don't know how confident we can be in 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 that fact that Pisu adapted his strategy because of what happened with Jadong. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I, I think it was a direct response. I think that second robotics facility was a direct response to what he saw. Um, Yarnak to putting down that hatchery, and maybe it was Bisu thinking, oh my god, here we go again, mass macro zerg, I need to get an extra reaver down, because it cost me the last time around. But, you know what, I think, you know, we we're commenting about whether or not Bisu should have not put that second robotics facility down or not, whether or not he should not have, uh, you know, all that other stuff, but I think I think it just comes down to that one loss, and, you know, I don't know whether to call it luck or sloppy play by Bisu, it's really difficult to call, because, you know, that losing that, I mean, you know, that shuttle was low on health, so it was a little bit careless of him, not clearing the way initially with his Corsairs and to be get, to get caught out it there. Was. Um, it was probably a little bit careless. Uh, so I think you've got to give, you know, 30% vigilance to, to Yarnak, 30% sloppy play to Bisu, and 30% luck, or 33.5% either way. Um, but I think that's what, I think, you know, everything else aside, I think Bisu would have probably triumphed had he not lost that shuttle there. Any uh, closing thoughts there, Moltrap? I think we might have Any lost Moltrap. I think we might yeah, have lost him. Any closing thoughts there, Clazard? Think... Um, wow, Bisu is out of the MSL. Can you believe it? I can't. Um, he's gone. Jesus. I absolutely stunned. I don't know what I don't know what's going to be like, but uh, it, it, you know that's. I, I think the MSL is 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 something less without Bisu for for all my Zerg love. Uh, and, and for all my joy in having two more Zerg players, and for having the main Zerg killer taken out, I think Bisu going out means that a Zerg is going to win this MSL. That's my prediction. Okay, Zerg taking the MSL. Are you going to say Jadong, or are you going to say uh, Savior along that line? Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, Jadong's Zerg versus Zerg is, is pretty amazing, but I wouldn't put it past Savior to take him down if Savior sets his mind to it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think it's going to be tough to stop the Zergs this time around. I think Bisu going out is, is really a hurt for Protoss. And all right, we looks like we just got Moltrap back. So, uh, any closing thoughts there for you, uh, Moltrap? Oh, I thought I'd been here the whole time. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, only closing thoughts would be that that um, I mean, I think Savior could definitely take it. Although Jadong did pretty much uh, kick Savior's butt in the pro league a couple months ago, if that's any indicator. So I don't know. Something to think about. I think Jadong can take it. Honestly, I, I'm not sure. There's uh, anyone in there that could really beat him in, in a best of series if he plays at his top level, but um, 
And like I said before, anything can happen. BC can get knocked out of the MSL by Yark, you know, so who knows? Yeah. All right, absolutely insane. Bisu out of the MSL. I can't even believe I'm saying that. Uh, and that but hey, know, good for my liquid bed because I called that. <laughs> it's interesting that um, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I wonder if it has anything to do with Bisu's general state of mind lately, because ever since losing the last MSL, he hasn't been playing up to his usual snuff. So I don't know. Maybe on. Maybe. Maybe Bisu of four months ago would have taken this this uh, this grouping 2-0. Just a thought. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the final game. This is going to be between July, another rematch between July Zerg and Yark, and it's gonna. I hope it's going to be a good one. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. This has just been absolutely insane.